Today I wanted to share with you the uh, the wrath of God. It is a kind of an unpopular uh, topic. Um, it is nonetheless actually it in reality of uh, the wrath of God. Is it legit? Is it uh, it is uh, justifiable? Is it important? And why did get God so ang why did God get so angry? For example, so these are the questions we want to deal with. I actually saw an article about. Um, about the wrath of God in the Gospel Coalition, which makes it so uh, intriguing, and I just need to get that going. So, so that's what I want to uh, to talk about today. Uh, Romans chapter one verse fourteen: For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. Now this is really important. Uh, first, God is the Romans chapter one, Paul is establishing that there is no excuse for man to and women to reject God's existence and his uh, to acknowledge him and therefore honor him and revere him because he's our creator so this is really important um, but why how does how does the Bible say that God is really uh, existent if you look around here I'm in the park here in the Manhattan Union Square right now actually if you look around the trees the beautiful trees the sky and everything that is that's all a result of of the the supremacy of god the providence of what what god has given to us so to deny that it will be atrocity because because the bible says what can be known about god is plain is plain p-l-a-i is plain to them so you can't look at this stuff and say there's no god and and uh, this is uh you know I am not too bothered whether he's here or not. My life, I'm busy, I'm getting on with that. You can't. You know why you can't? Because the reason is, he's God. <laughs> That's the reason. If it is like uh, uh, whether the uh, asteroid, whatever thing that drops from the sky, hit his sub-Saharan sub desert or not, whether it happened or not, if it really did, and you're not even if it did so what yeah that's a word so what so what you know so what it hits up sahara desert or somewhere midwest uh so what but with god you can't say that anymore because you can't say so what anymore because <laughs> because he is gonna hold you accountable uh he 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 create everything his invisible attributes, eternal power and divine nature. Eternal power and divine nature is all in here. This is actually Union Square. The eternal power and attributes of uh, divine nature have all been perceived. There's just no excuse. Since the creation of the world, there is no excuse. Verse 20, verse 21, for they, although they knew God, they did not honor him. Now, there's another category. A lot of people know, yeah, there got to be God. There is God. Yeah, it can explain a lot of things. The science can't explain it. A lot, majority of the people in the world, I would agree statistically also that would say that there is God. They know God is there. But the majority of the people, the problem is they don't honor Him as God or give thanks to Him. Now, this is really, really important line. If you don't honor God as God and not give thanks and just flippingly use the park and oxygen and the beautiful air, the green leaves and everything that in the world, you are such an ungrateful son of a gun. <laughs> Pardon the language, but this just just to express how unfair you talk about injustice unfair is really unfair after people after the god who created give you the birds and the oxygen and the fresh air and the trees and leaves and everything to you and four seasons and everything absolute and beautiful balance you don't suck out of a 
sucked in, sucked into the cosmos, floating in the air. You know, even the slightest drop in in the oxygen, you die on the inside, on the spot. Even if the sun gets a, a, a mile, let's say, closer to us, we'll be burned to death, or a mile away from us, we'll be frozen to death. All these things, we're no excuse. So, so if we know that if we don't honor Him, giving thanks to Him, we, but but a lot of people don't, mo uh, most people don't honor Him, don't give Him thanks, and they become futile, futile in their thinking. Futile is, is the word, uh, if I go to NIV, that word is, uh, uh, and they become futile, <laughs> and the foolish hearts were darkened in the NIV also, futile. It means just uh, vain, useless, the hearts are just, and the hearts were darkened. Okay, the foolish hearts were darkened. Also, Ex although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. They exchanged the glory of immortal God for images look like a mortal human being or birds and animals. So that, that's, that's why the wrath of God is poured out. But you see in verse 18, the wrath of God has been poured out from heaven against all ungodliness. You better believe that God is pouring out His judgment on us now as we speak. And some people call it karma. You do bad things, you reap bad things. That's kind of true, but not really knowing that the origin of all these good things and the judgment comes from God. And a lot of bad things comes in, in, the, in the permissive will of God, you know, allowance of God. God brought Israel to judgment, to exile, for example. Six million people, whatever million people go into exile. A lot of them were raped, women were killed, and sons and daughters were judged badly because they're totally going wicked and evil against God. Joshua's time, Joshua's army went out and killed the Amalekites and all those Amazites and all the Zites and literally demolish everyone, kill every single one of them. All right, the judgment of God because they are totally reckless and evil. Heart's intent is wicked. You know, Egypt was totally demolished, judged by God through Moses. And now, more than that, the, uh, the godlessness and wickedness of the people suppress the truth by their wickedness. They they suppress the truth. They're not only wicked, they go and suppress the truth of God in order to justify their wickedness. You know, if you are wicked, you just do mind your own business, stay within your own wickedness. Maybe it's not as bad, though it is very bad on its own. But if you go and suppress the truth of God and spread it out to others to justify your wicked things, that is double, 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 triple worse. That face of judgment, that face of wrath of God, outpouring of the wrath of God that knows no bounds. Seriously, that's what exactly what's happening in the world. And verse 24 said, Therefore, God gave them over to the sinful, in the sinful desires of their hearts, to so sexual imp impurity, of the degrading of their bodies with one another. God gave them over. To what? Interesting to sexual impurity of the degrading of the bodies. See, God judgment poor them not to uh, become poorer or to become more, uh, more, more hungry or more beaten out in jail. That is not what God gave them over to. Interestingly enough, God gave them over to the to, to the uh, to the to the to the sexual impurity of the degrading of the bodies, degrading of the bodies with one another. Okay. So the shameful lost women exchange natural sexual relations to unnatural ones. Everything that goes on. And then women were inflamed with the lust for one another. Men against men commit a shameful acts with other men and receive for themselves the due penalty for the error. You know, all we, we, we all know that that's what we're all talking about. But I just want to conclude in saying that the judgment of God now bring it to the long trajectory, the eschatology, eschatological ending. Eschatology demands that the, the, the final judgment will end in hell. There will be the final judgment that will be bringing to justice everything. God is just and righteous and holy. And the only answer to that is hell in the end. Heaven and hell. The Lord bless you. Amen.